There is nowhere like Scotland. Scotland is a country in a country. It is part of Great Britain, England, Scotland and Wales, and of the United Kingdom, England, Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland. Scotland is in the far northwest of Europe, between the Atlantic Ocean and the North Sea. It is often cold and grey, and it rains a lot in some parts of the country. But the people of Scotland love their country, and many visitors to Scotland love it too. They love the beautiful hills and mountains of the north, the sea and the eight hundred islands, and the six cities, Edinburgh, Glasgow, Aberdeen, Dundee, Inverness, and Stirling. The country is special, and Scottish people are special too, often warm and friendly. There are about five million people in Scotland. Most Scots live in the south, in or near the big cities of Edinburgh and Glasgow. Most of the north of the country is very empty. Not many people live there. A Scottish person is also called a Scot, but you cannot talk about a Scotch person. Scotch means whiskey, a drink made in Scotland. Scottish people are British because Scotland is part of Great Britain, but you must not call Scottish people English. The Scots and the English are different. These days, everyone in Scotland speaks English, but at one time, people in the north and west of Scotland did not speak English. They had a different language, a beautiful language called Gaelic. About 60,000 people, 1% of the people in Scotland, speak Gaelic now, but many more want Gaelic in their lives because it is part of the story of Scotland. Scotland is not a very hot country. In the summer, the days are long and it can be warm. But in the winter, the days can be just seven hours long and it often rains. For many years, Scotland was a poor country, but now things are better for most people. There is oil and gas in the sea between Scotland and Norway. Edinburgh is an important place for money, and there are big banks there, like the Royal Bank of Scotland. People in many countries drink Scotch whisky, and the whisky business makes a lot of money for Scotland. Tourists visit this beautiful country, and that brings money to Scotland too. Many people love living and working there, and more than 20 million visitors go to Scotland each year. Scotland is the oldest country in the world. Why? Because the hills of the northwest and the Hebridean islands are more than 2,000 
700 million years old. You can walk on some of the oldest rocks in the world there. People first lived there 9,000 years ago. At Scarabray, on the Orkney Islands, in the far north of Scotland, you can see the houses of early people from about 5,000 years ago. The houses at Knapp of Hour, also on the Orkneys, are the oldest in Europe. The Romans went to Scotland, but they did not stay there for long. Between A.D. 122 and 128, they built Hadrian's Wall. It was 117 kilometres long and went from sea to sea across the most northern part of England. The Romans stayed in England for nearly 300 years, until about A.D. 400, and then they left and went back to Rome. Today, you can visit Hadrian's Wall in the north of England and walk along parts of it. Who were the first Scots. The people north of Hadrian's Wall were called Picts by the Romans. We can still see some of their story in their pictures in stone. But there were also Scotty from Ireland. The name Scotland comes from the Scotty. Vikings from Norway, and some English people from the south. These different peoples came under one king in the 800s. The first king of all the Scots, many people say, was Kenneth MacAlpin. He was king from 843 to 858. But the most famous Scottish king of this early time is Macbeth, 1040 to 1057. He is famous because Shakespeare wrote about him. For Shakespeare, Macbeth was a very bad man, but he was not worse than many other kings of those early days. There were many battles between England and Scotland. One important Scot was William Wallace, about 1270 to 1305. You can learn about him in the film Braveheart. Then, in 1314, the Scottish king, Robert the Bruce, took his men to the Battle of Bannockburn. After the battle, 10,000 Englishmen were dead, and Robert became one of the most important kings in the story of Scotland. Soon after, Scotland was free, and stayed free for nearly 300 years. In 1542, a little girl called Mary became Queen of Scotland. She was six days old, and only the second woman to be Queen of this country. Mary, Queen of Scots, became a tall and beautiful woman, but some Scots did not want her to be queen. Mary went to England and asked Elizabeth, the English queen, for help, but she did not get it. 
she never returned to Scotland and died in England after 19 years. Mary's son, James Stuart, became King of Scotland and then King James I of England too. In 1707, the two countries became Great Britain. In the 1700s, Scotland was more like two countries than one. There were rich cities in the south, but there were poor country people in the highlands, the hill country in the centre and the north of Scotland. At that time, Edinburgh was one of the most important cities in Europe, and many famous thinkers lived there. Then, in the 1800s, Glasgow became rich. People built big ships there, and later, trains. So, the south of Scotland had busy cities with beautiful buildings, lots of work and money. In the Highlands, things were very different. After 1714, Great Britain had German kings from Hanover in North Germany. Many Scots in the Highlands wanted a Scottish king, someone from the Stuart family, like Mary and James, not a German king in London. They wanted Charles Stuart, Bonnie Prince Charlie, the grandson of the last Stuart king, James II of England and the seventh of Scotland. Charles Stuart left France and came to Scotland. He wanted to be King of Scotland and England too. But Charles and his men lost the Battle of Culloden near Inverness in 1746. Culloden was the last big battle in Great Britain. After the battle, the British soldiers looked for Charles, but he went into the hills. The people of the highlands and the islands helped him to go back to France, but life became difficult for them after that. The British soldiers stayed in the highlands and took away houses and land from the friends of Charles Stuart. After this, many poor families left the Highlands and went to the cities in the south of Scotland or to other countries, the USA, Canada, Australia and New Zealand. Some went because they wanted to begin a new life, but others went because the rich owners of the land in Scotland wanted to put animals there. Between 1840 and 1880, 40,000 people left just one island, the Island of Skye. Life became more difficult in the 1900s, but oil and gas in the North Sea began to bring money to Scotland again in the 1970s. Let's look now at some of the famous places in the Scotland of today.